Speaking of the Grimace Shake. Are we ready? Ready. 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 Uh, ready. Ready to roll out. Okay. Absolutely. The last time on Curse of Strahd. Once crossing into the land of Barovia and fending off a group of soul-sucking shadows with the help of a vengeful scarecrow, you finally find yourself free of the dark woods. Before you lays a misty valley, a misty valley, the sun obstructed by gray clouds and a foreboding castle overlooking a small town. After following a raven with blue-tipped wings into the town, the ta um, the recent burgomeister, a young man named Ismark, reveals much about the land of Barovia. Its ruler is a cruel vampire known as Strahd von Zarovich. A mob led by a man named Doru recently attempted to slay him in his coffin. It failed, and Strahd gave the town three months to prepare for his arrival. Ismark convinced many of the town's folks to stay, but when Strahd's undead army arrived, he, um, they slew many in the town, including his father, Ismark's father. He now bears the title Ismark the Lesser, in mockery of his great-grandfather's name. Barovia itself is a dark realm, and nearly all are trapped within the mist. Ismark regrets to inform you that there is no escape, save for the near-impossible task of slaying Strahd. And even that, it's not certain. Ismark suggests you go to the town of Balaki, where many refugees from, from Barovia seek safety. He also requests you, es you escort his sister, Irina, to the church there, for her own protection, as Strahd himself has taken any interest in her. But first, he offers you a place to stay for the night at his home. So we were just leaving the Blood on the Vine Tavern. And with a Ramaya hanging on to his shoulder and to his his elbow. What's that term? Be being a hussy. I hope that was Vogel such and not Mark talking. <laughs> but he escorts you all throughout the the misty and lonely streets of Barovia till reaching the Burgomeister of his home, the uh, Burgomeister Mansion. Uh, as Vogelsuch walks with everybody, he just drags the uh, scythe behind him. He doesn't, like, pick it up. He just, just drags it. It is, like, deafening in the silence of the town. Going across the, the cobblestone... <laughs> Ismark like tries to like pretend like he he doesn't notice, but um he says uh, uh forgive me, but uh could you could you carry that a little more proper? It's like nails on a chalkboard. I, I suppose. How would you prefer me to carry it? What do you with your hands? Sort of picks it up and just kinda of holds it like horizontal like a bow stick is this to your satisfaction as long as you don't turn too quickly very well I'll just carry it like that we can surely find a holster for you perhaps for what means then i have to take it out before i can use it You can imagine that we have to be sneaky at any point. Uh, you like dragging that around. It, it, you can hear it like a mile away, man. <sighs> I suppose if that is the what you wish. And I will actually um, think I can do this. Uh. Tch -tch -tch. I'll just, uh, it'll disappear, because it's my packed weapon. It just turns into a, uh, I can just dismiss it. <laughs> I 
And it's... I believe my assumption was correct. You are no mere scarecrow. There's something more about you. Yes, I was killed once. I'm starting to wonder why. That's always on my mind. As you mark way to the edge of the town. A wary looking mansion squats behind a rusting iron fence. The iron gates are twisted and torn. The right gate lies cast aside while the left swings lazily in the wind. The sh the stuttering squeal and clang of the gate repeats with mindless precision. Weeds choke the ground and press with menace upon the house itself. Yet inside the walls, the growth has been tampered down to create a path all about the domain. Heavy claw markings have stripped the once beautiful finish of the walls. Great black marks tell, the, tell of the fires that have assailed the mansion. Not a pane nor a shard of glass stands in any window. All the windows are barred with planks, each one marked with stains of evil omen. Well, is this oh, good? Oh, I say, I guess uh, it'll be a while before we see a cheering-looking abode or something. Um, everything here looks absolutely dreadful. Yes, well, that is that is our penance. You get used to it after a while. You know, I. I guess I've known nothing else. He, he walks up the pathway to the, the home. So Minerva's going to follow him along. We're going to give me a perception check. Everyone? Yeah. Sorry, Joy, what'd you say? Perception check. Perception, okay. Sorry, my cat's acting up, so. Uh, uh, perception, yeah, not perception. But I'm both. Uh -huh. I don't know why there's two. I only leave. once. <laughs> Maybe out of advantage for some reason. I think the 19 is still great. Yeah, what is um, a scarecrow looking at? Straight ahead. The door. Um, Groot, maybe it's because <laughs> you're more in tune with, um, like, everything around you, like plants and stuff around you, but you notice that, uh, a lot of the, the grass and um, the bushes around the, the mansion have been have been flattened. And um, you see, like, wolf wolf tracks. Like they've been pacing around the house. Well, there's, like, like a bunch of dogs or something all around there. He goes, uh, wolves. Like, domesticated wolves, or like, they just kind of show up every now and again because someone keeps feeding them? More like dire wolves. Got it, got it, okay. One thing you, uh, like I mentioned in the bar, that, uh, even the animals are under the sway of the uh, persuasion of Strahd, and the dire wolves are often his spies. Uh, but we'll discuss it. Um, you don't mind knocking and announcing yourself as not to, to startle my sister so she knows we have guests. Why don't you just enter first and announce us? Say, well, if you wish. I don't think we've told Oh, 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 oh I know why. Um, he goes, well, uh, the doors are locked from the inside for her protection. Won't you find your voice more reassuring than a bunch of strangers? I was just giving you the honors. And he just, he steps forward and knocks. And he goes, Irina, it's me. I brought guest. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? After a moment, you hear footsteps and, um, and, uh, you can tell uh, 
something's sliding over on the on the uh, on the door that she's opening up a little peephole. And she goes, "Is Mark here home early?" And he sees the the guest around you, uh, Romaya, like like hanging off your shoulder, or um, holding onto your your uh, your arm. And he goes, "You brought guests indeed." And she goes, "Outsiders! How exciting! Give me a moment." And you hear the uh, her fiddling with keys and unlocking several locks on the front door. And uh, she opens up the door. Um. Minerva will uh, enter as long like it seems like she's very welcoming. She's like super excited and curious about except outsiders. She's gonna be kind of stern with her and she's like, "My dear, apparently there's there's a bunch of like people from this Strahd character who are like trying to kill the people in the town. Um, maybe you shouldn't be so excited when there's a bunch of strangers showing up. <laughs> Think about your self-preservation, girl." She's like taking it back, but before you, you see a, uh, a young woman with a darker skin and unusually, um, compared to everyone else you've seen in this town, like vibrant auburn red hair. And uh, she has this, this thick, um, thick red scarf pulled around her neck. And she goes, uh, well, I, I knew it was safe, um come in she invites you inside well it looks like you can handle yourself sort of um you, you do know that she has like a sword and a scabbard like at the ready yeah and the the art's amazing it's with the um with the different types of armor as well yep it looks really really nice that is the um, fan version here's the official version if you want to see which is also very very good yeah, no, they're just two different feelings. Ooh. Yeah, I yeah. really like the details in her scarf on, the, on the, and in like the details in the, um, the metal, in the official one. But like having, that full one is also really really cool. Mm. Well, it's a little bit more uh, civilian like. And mm -hmm. all, um, the interior of the mansion is well furnished, yet the picture shows sign of great wear. Noticeable oddity, oddities are bore are the boarded up windows and the presence of holy symbols in every room. The Burgermeister, the former Burgermeister, is in a side drawing room on the floor, lying in a simple wooden coffin, surrounding surrounded by wilting flowers and a faint odor of decay. Um, Vogel such as he comes on in, looks over to Irina, takes a step towards her and just basically staring at her goes are you the one who killed me uh, thank you for our uh, for your hospitality and it just it bodily just pushes uh, <laughs> <a little laughs> further into the building. <laughs> it just like drags him further into the building rather than him just staring at her she kind of like looks at each one of you and go what a Outsiders, I never thought I would, would live to see the day. Uh, as she's kind of closing the door and like resetting the locks. Um, but Ismark goes, uh, Irina, if you could um, make our guests comfortable. Um, I have some, some, well, uh, he says, uh, sorry, I'm just thinking of the order of events here. He says, um, I mean, if you can, uh, make our guests, help get our guests settled, um, to make some preparations for a search party. I'll tell, I'll tell you more. In a, a once they're settled. She goes, um, oh, okay, brother, as you wish. Um, saying we have, we have two guest bedrooms on the upper floors, if you, uh, follow me. And um, you see her eyes kind of glance at the room where the um, where the coffin is, but she like just lingers a moment. Then she kind of composes herself and goes, 
I'm sorry. Follow me, please. Follow along. Um. Follow, 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 follow. <laughs> Minerva is going to take note of that dead body in the room and just kind of like not say anything out loud, but going to want to talk about that sometime. Uh, you would remember it as Mark said, like his, like their father was killed in the in the attack. So, I have a pretty idea idea who it is. Um, saying uh, I didn't say anything about you know him now being decor. No, interested about this custom of keeping the dead body in the house. Do do you say that out loud to her? <laughs> um. Yeah, she'll make us like a sort of like try not to. Because it's obviously a very trying time for them. Just be like, oh, um, please tell me more about your custom of keeping um, people who have passed in the home. This is very curious. I haven't seen this before. It's not a custom. Um, we've just simply been preparing to um, get him transported to the, the church. His funeral is tomorrow. Oh, well, um, my condolences. Because, um, I guess we, we loved him very much. Uh, Why do but... you keep him inside? Because, well, otherwise, the wolves will get him, or whatever, whatever else lurks outside. It's most safe here. And I, and I, and I dare say, uh, one does get used to the smell of death. Yes, you know, not that too I often. can agree with. Um, so, uh, will any of you be bunking in the same room? Uh, I'm pretty good with, like, anyone, you know? That's cool with me, cool with you. I merely require a large enough space... It matters not if someone else is there. I have questions about you. Don't we all? <laughs> all right. So if, if you ask him, <laughs> make sure we're we're with you. I want to hear this, so he doesn't have to say it twice. It's really convenient for both parties at that point. <laughs> I, we only just met him outside of town. And Irina turns to you, Romaya, and he goes, um, "I read about your kind in a book, a uh, a tiefling, correct?" <laughs> Tiefling, yes. Oh. I've, uh, been saying it wrong all these years. He goes, uh, I just, I, I love, I love your horns. They're so, so elegant. Oh, thank you so much. That's very sweet of you to say. I take it my kind aren't, um common well to uh be frank nothing but but humans and the occasional elf are ever seen in Barovia. any outsiders we get uh tend not to um to last very long and i personally haven't seen one well since i've been alive frankly uh for my will kind of like look at grood and just be like well, now I know we're definitely not anywhere near the Sword Coast. Sword Coast. No, you won't find the ocean here. That's what you're referring to. Nothing but mountains and forest and mist and clouds and... and snow and death. And she just trails off. Uh, you, Grood, was it? Um... Quite, hey, that's me, yeah. Quite the big one. Um, you're going to require your own bed. Like, I'm fine. Like, like one of the larger ones. Like I guess so, like, but I... Yeah, if you if you want. No, no, I guess I am the biggest, so I usually get that. <laughs> She's doing like, oh, okay, maybe we pull some of the, uh, of the sofas up here so you can sleep together. on together. Um, but Ismark... After he kind of 
shows your room. He steps up and goes, um, um, Irina, we, uh, we have to talk. She goes, um, my brother, I'm helping out, out our guests. He goes, this is important. Um, he turns to you all, if, if you would excuse us. Of course. No worries, dude. Oh, she, and Irina goes, oh, well, make yourself at home. Um, you're, you're our guest while we're here. If you need anything, well, just let us know. And she kind of half closes the door to the room that you're, she introduces you to. And uh, you can hear Ismark and Irina kind of talking down the hallway, but you can't make out what they're saying. You think they're trying to use us for some sort of sacrifice? I think he's about to tell her that uh, she's going on a trip. To heaven. To be as possible. That would be weird for that to happen twice. As long as coincidence doesn't become a pattern. I believe it takes three to become a pattern. As far as I can tell, I've only been killed once, and therefore it's not even a coincidence yet. That you know of. You could be, have been killed half a dozen times, just not remember yes. the previous ones. Entirely possible. Hmm. Uh, Groot at this We're point, Dees has... Um, Groot, um, Dees has popped out of your pocket and begins, like, scratching at one of the pillows, like, getting it, like, all comfortable. Hey, yeah, dude, no digging. <laughs> it's like, don't mess up their pillows, okay? Claws are kind of sharp sometimes. But yeah, curl up, little buddy. A moment does pass, and um, Irina does to step in, and uh, in, in his mark, he notes that um, their eyes are a little puffy, a little red. How Is are you it... two doing? Uh, um, oh, pardon me, it's just, is Mark, uh, just convinced me to head to Velaki, and if you're willing, you're going to be my escorts. Absolutely want to help out anyone we can. He did mention that, yes. She, she kind of, uh, and you ask nothing in return. The goodness of your hearts. Well, it seems kind of terrible to take advantage of people who are obviously in such a dire situation. Um, also, maybe we'll be able to get more information in this other town, Blackie, to get ourselves home. We're not from here, and quite frankly, I don't want to stay here. So. She, she knows his Mutual D. Interest. She knows his D's on the pillow. She, and she goes, what is that creature? That's Dee's. Uh, he's pretty cool. Don't worry. He's mine. It's not some random thing we let in here. His his tail is so fluffy. It helps him balance, yeah. So he can jump pretty good. He can climb trees real fast. Really he good is... at find. He hides. He puts so many nuts in his mouth. <laughs> That's good to know. I've never seen such a little creature. Yeah, he's he's a pretty cool dude. He can, and sometimes he like hides stuff on you, but he always remembers exactly where he put it. Oh, he's so clever. Yeah. Cool little dude. That that does explain a great deal about the the wildlife around here. Then, if uh, squirrels are not a, a common thing, squirrel. Yeah, yeah, it's a squirrel. Uh, they're pretty common. Um, usually you don't just pick them up. Ideally, you leave them alone, you know. But uh, we just became good buds out in the woods one time. Is Mark speaks up saying uh, most rodents in Rovia are um, spies of Strahd. But this one oh. seems nice. Yeah. Hmm. Really hope that doesn't happen to D's, because that would be that would be nuts. Having to 
be my little guy, all of a sudden being a spy. Well, Ismark goes, well, if you excuse me, I must um, start organizing Gertrude's uh, search party and um, perhaps give it, get us some some dinner. Um, he, he gives a bow and he goes, make my leave. Be safe, brother. You remember you're you're feeding uh you're feeding six tonight, but she kind of looks at at, at Vogel such. She goes, "Does the scarecrow eat?" I'm not sure. We don't know. Uh, I want to see if I hear that. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have no idea if he eats. I tried eating once, and the food just got stuck in there. Had to take it out a few days later. Even I couldn't deal with the wretchedness of it. That's cool. One less plate to have to fill. Nice. Irina says, um, well, it's not too terribly late. Uh, some of the, the town store should still be open if you wish to uh, buy provisions. Um, otherwise, uh, I would just love to get to know you and chat and where you came from and now I have so many questions. Cool. Yeah, like, we can do that. Um, I guess we should go stock up on stuff. Uh, she does give you... Give you directions to um, a uh, a uh, do, do, do. What, I mean a shop. I'm trying to think of the, the proper, proper name. General store. General store. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. He does say yes. that. Um, Bill Drath, the man that you ran that you ran into in the bar, um, does run a. Uh, Merchant shop. If you're in need of supplies. But she says, um, don't mention Ismark while you're there. He's not a f fan of him at the moment. And... Good to know. It's like curiosity. You probably don't have a bunch of gold at the moment. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a couple, a couple things from the from the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that we can sell. Yeah. Yeah, I have to do that. Um, I have this. He pulls out a silver coin. Not a silver piece, just a silver coin. Cool. I don't know how much it's worth. Tucks the bat into a straw. Uh, one second. I like to keep my precious possessions next to my heart. There's no I kid. room. I kid. That's why there's he no usually there. sits in my pocket. Send you a message, Mark. Got it. I'll talk about that later, Mark. Um, mm. So, uh, I guess she gives you directions to a general store. If you wish, uh, wish to go there. But she says, um, it, it can, it can wait till tomorrow before we leave, if you wish. If I recall, the owner is currently getting drunk anyway. Oh yeah, better let him be then. Yeah, he kind of stormed out, but it's like, oh, yeah, he's... Wait, I live here, and he comes back in. Yeah. <laughs> Best to wait till the, the morning. Um, so uh, she um, kind of shows you to, to your room where you'll be staying. Um, how, are you, how, are you, how, excuse me, how are you going to be split up? 
Groot could be the scarecrow, dude. I don't oh. mind. I have no preference. Um, Minerva's gonna split up with, I guess, then, um, Vio and Ramaya? If that's the other group? Like the girls and the boys. <laughs> yeah, um, Vio. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's Vogel. a girl, so God, it's kind of close. Vogel such <laughs> has no gender. You, you like, um, <laughs> Vio just, like, kind of in between both doors going, hmm, hmm. I feel like Groot and the Scarecrow smell very similar. <laughs> I was just kind of expecting the Scarecrow to just stand over the dead body the entire night. We're both very no, right earthy. I would stand outside, however, the wolves could attack me as I kind of think to himself. Rest. Do you have anything they'd want? No. I don't think so. But you never know. Well, you you could possibly be seen as a chew toy, uh, or they might whittle on you. Yes, only some animals are afraid of me. Others enjoy my company. Okay, whoever is staying in the girls' bedroom, roll me a perception check. Okay. I'm apparently too busy with my contraptions. <laughs> yeah, they haven't seen your cannon yet. Look at my cannon! Ramaya, um, as you're um, kind of preparing your bed, uh, you notice a um, a uh, sheet of paper as it's been as it's been pulled from like a journal has been left on the nightstand. I'm gonna read it. Okay. Well, not a journal, more like a, a book, but um, mm -hmm. but whole written book. So it's a lot, but um, you notice that it, it's a page from a book called Van Richten's Guide to Vampires. Ooh. Joey, could you do me a favor on handouts? Could you highlight all the text and then click the um, remove style button uh, that's in the uh, in the uh, edit box? Where's the editor. Where's the yeah, it looks like a little. It looks like an eraser. It should be next to like the strike through and, and bold. Because I'm using dark mode. Yeah, thank you. Because I'm using dark mode and all the text you copied over is black. Yeah. So oh, okay. Uh, yeah. This will so providing you don't have any like bolding or anything like there that needs to be done. I'm okay, I got you. I got you. Know about that. Yeah, it'll. It's now white on black for me, so that works. Okay. Thanks, Joey. I learned yeah. about that recently. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, but when you read it over, like you notice it kind of gives some weaknesses of vampires. She'll probably like as she she'll like see it, grab it, and then kinda of, like, ooh, shake it, like wave it in the air a little bit. And then sit down on the bed and read it out loud. I, what, hold it, uh, yeah, hold so, it vertically, and then a then a centerfold vampire comes out. Oh no, <gasps> scandal! Um, would you, would you be reading it in your head, or would you be no, reading no, it out loud? loud? Out loud. <laughs> She'd be like, "Ooh, look at this!" Mm. Let's just start yeah. reading it. The centerfold is a, is a giant steak. Would you like to read it out loud, or want me to give you some highlights? Or I can read the whole thing out loud if everybody wants me to. I just wasn't going to because I figured nobody wants to hear me read the whole thing. But... Do you want to do the yeah, thing where we pass it back? The audience and... does. <laughs> Popcorn yeah. reading? <laughs> yeah, each one gives a, gets a paragraph. Let's do that. This will, that way we're all involved. All right. <clears throat> In some shadowed corners of the world, the vampire reigns as a fearsome predator. Ooh, I like that. Beyond mere bloodlust, these creatures are cursed with a range of abilities and weaknesses that make them as enigmatic as they are terrifying. I imagine that they're like huddled up on the bed reading it together, like as if they're reading like a like a, like like a little lamp in the middle. romance novel or something. <laughs> like ooh. for a magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Who, who wants to go to next? Yeah, who do you pass to? I'll try Vio's with us too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I forgot. Vio, do you want to read? Uh, 
Their bodies are resilient uh, to mundane weapons, shrugging off blows that would fell most mortal and regenerate, uh, regenerating the even grievous wounds in a matter of moments. They move with unnatural grace, their senses sharply attuned to the whispers of the night. But it is in their supernatural abilities that their true horror lies, that they can bend the will of others to their own, ensnaring friend and foe with a, but a gaze and a whisper. They can shift form with the ease of thought, becoming bats, wolves, or even a sinister mist that creeps beneath doorways through, and through cracks. And uh, those, uh, their fangs kill, uh, become vampire spawn, ravenous creatures with a vampire's hunger for blood. Charming. Thank you, Vio. Pass it over to here. <laughs> yeah, pass it over. Aren't you a bard? That wasn't very charismatic. <laughs> I'm not the poetry kind. <laughs> I, I do the music, not the lyrics. I'm the guitarist, not the lead singer. Yeah. Um, all right, so... Um, the creatures are not wholly invincible, thank goodness. However, possessing a tapestry of strengths woven with, a fatal, weakness, with fatal weaknesses, sunlight and running water can end their cursed existence. Oh, that's good to know. And wooden stakes... Hmm, I'll think about that. Through their heart will paralyze them as they sleep. They recoil from the sight of holy symbols and cannot enter a residence without invitation. They bear neither shadow nor reflection and must return to their coffins, crypts, or graves to rest by the end of day. Good to know. Now all together. <laughs> oh god. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> It is said oh. that the bloodlust of these creatures is an unquenchable fire that burns within their undead hearts. Oh, that's so romantic. The young and newly turned are slaves to this craving, often losing themselves in a frenzy at the mere scent of blood. But those who have walked the night for centuries, as well as those with indomitable focus and will, may learn to temper this fire. Those who do so possess the rare ability to conceal their monstrous nature, retracting and exposing their fangs at will, a sign that the monster within is held at bay, if only while the vampire allows. Ugh. Well, it's good to know that vampire mythos is the same anywhere. Here, Sword Coast. Literally anywhere else in Faerun. I mean, I don't really know too much about vampires because it's not really... See, there's nothing about making things or creating contraptions, so I probably needed that the most out of all of us. I don't know, Vio, how was your knowledge of vampires before this little leaflet? Uh, just stories that i uh, told. Uh, usually the people that run into them weren't around to tell the stories, so it was usually a uh, third party. You hear a, well. a little knock on the door. And here Irina's ghost voice of voice go, It's me, Irina. May I come in? Of course. Quick hide the paper. <laughs> she'll Mormaya will stuff it in her wherever. She um comes in with like uh holding some um like evening wear, some sleeping clothes. And he goes, uh found some uh, of my um Um, I, I figured you didn't want to sleep in your uh, adventuring clothes, so I brought some uh, some sleepwear. Hope they fit. Um. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. Jesus is running around, going crazy. <laughs> um, I couldn't help you uh, over here. You were um, reciting uh, the lines of that. Of that book page. Oops, maybe we were speaking a bit too loud. No, the walls here are paper thin. He goes, um, our friend Doru was, uh, was staying here. Or no, he was, um, we were host to a, uh, a traveler. Not too long ago, and uh, he and Doru, or our friend Doru, or spend or spend hours up on here, and um, I remember them reading an excerpt from that that journal before he set off to the castle. 
para si só. But important information. If you ever come face to face with any type of vampire, even the devil. Well, yes, I, I didn't know any of this before, so I, now I feel a little bit more informed, and maybe I should start thinking about incorporating a lot more wood into my uh, into my gadgetry. Gadgets. What kind of gadgets? Like, like clockwork. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'd say that's the, the easiest way to say it. Um, well, uh, what? Is there anything around here that you um, you could give me? Like a little trinket or something? Or something that's, uh, oh, I don't know. A picture frame? Uh, something? Um, Actually, you know what? Can you grab? Do you have? Is there like I don't know if they have like like smaller pictures or like um, a locket with like a photo of her brother in it or something? You may actually have a locket, hold on. But, but like, there's definitely a bunch of pictures around. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to do my little. Um, Oh, what's that thing I can do? Where it's like I can magical tinkering. Mm -hmm. uh, I would want to take because there's something that can um, record like uh, like words into it. So it'd be really cool to have like a little locket. So when it opens up, it would like say something from his voice or from uh, her as like a reminder because they're going to be separating from each other. Yeah. Um. So I can do a six second recorded message. Um, and so I'm intending to make this for her. So I would just be, I would make it a, like a locket for a photo and then ask her to give it to him so he can record something, <laughs> show them how to record it. And then so while we're traveling, she would have this locket with yeah, his- Yeah, or um, I think like, um, it's not quite the age of like photographs, you know? And like having a small portrait like that will probably be pretty oh, rare. A, a drawing picture then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she can. Um, she finds a nice like locket, you know. Okay, because then maybe I'll just have his his sound in it, and maybe a little yeah. like thing of his hair. I know they used to do that at times. <laughs> I keep his hair. Keep his hair. You can smell it whenever you need. Um, but yeah, so I would like to use I one. Was asleep, but I got it. <laughs> um. One thing of magical tinkering um, to create this this locket, uh, yeah. as long as is Mark is like agrees to to do it, because I do need him him to like say something into it to record it. Yeah, but you like give a little example of what could happen, and he goes, "How how fascinating! What a interesting bit of magic." Science, sir. Ma'am. Oh, that's what I was talking to Ismark. Yeah, he's not back, back quite yet. Oh, okay. oh yeah, because yeah, you went out hunting. Yeah. But yeah, so I, um, yeah, that's what, science, milady. Um, you can show him like the cannon, it's like yeah. while they're waiting. You construct oh, like a quick cannon. Work. Yes, here, thump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fires a hole in the wall. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> really, really needed that to not have a hole. Yeah. For tonight, especially, yeah. But um, but yeah. So I use one magical code tinkering for a voice locket, and, and when Ismark gets back, if Ismark gets back, yeah. um, to uh, hopefully help her, help her get through the travels we're gonna have ahead. Because what a coincidence! Around that time, you hear a knock on the door, and uh, the voice, Irina, it's me, Ismark. I brought brought dinner. And uh, as you head downstairs, she looks through the people and uh, unlocks the door, opens up, and there's Ismark holding a, uh, sorry, Bund, holding a, uh, a dead rabbit. Saying, uh, it's not much, but it should be enough to, to feed us all. Oh. Uh -huh. So sorry, uh, Avio, was it? Are you uh, a vegetarian? I know you're a, an elf. 
And elves I've, elves I've known uh, don't partake in the meat as much. This guy stares blankly. <laughs> or did I just Sorry, make I an assumption? An assumption? I'm good, thank you. Good thing we all have rations. Now quickly, Ismark, I need you to say something very meaningful right now into this locket. Um, meaningful to, uh, of, like, a, a, a grand speech? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I didn't hit record yet. And then, so she'll quickly brief him on what's happening, and then be like, would you care to record something for your sister? Um, I don't have to be there. If you'd rather me not be just looming over you while I'm uh, to record. This is how you'd set it, and I'll just give it to you. And when you're ready, do this, 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 <laughs> and then record. And then she'll have it with her while she's on her journey. There? There. I think I've, I think I've got all that. And Irina goes on. And, and then in a way that you'll be there protecting me, even though you'll be here protecting the, the town. And he goes, oh, I see, um, give, give me a moment. And he actually heads to the room with the coffin. And, uh, he, he hands Irina the, um, of uh, the hair, and, uh, he goes, well, Looks like we're eating good tonight. Um, if you wish, we have a good batch of potatoes as well. Potato stew. Mmm, potato stew. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, she starts preparing, um, preparing the meal uh, as Mark comes back and, uh, and hands Irina the locket. And um, he says, whenever you feel homesick um you just open this locket and maybe you'll be a little closer to home she kind of like holds it to her, her chest and is like thank you brother it'll be difficult but for now let us all all feast and get to know our new friends I did a good thing today Yes, you did. That was wait. Is where's Gruden's favorite grown all this? Man, they're doing a lot of stuff out there, huh? <laughs> well, Gruden at this point, they're they're room. like they're downstairs. Yeah, everyone's that, yeah. back together. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, but uh, they set the table at the um. Gives everyone a seat. It's a a small meal of um of rabbit and uh, potato stew. And um, water that's uh, surprisingly clean. Well, we are away from the big city. <laughs> um, but so, Irina uh, will kind of go around the table and start just asking questions about uh, like where you're from and what you do and what, what brought you to be adventurers. Um, we'll just start uh, with Minerva. Saying, tell me about these contraptions that you make. Well, then goes into a long-winded explanation that is incredibly um, particular and complicated. And has is not even remotely paying attention to Irina's reactions of whether she's like getting it or even still interested in the conversation anymore. I feel like she's very like curious in general, so she wouldn't do anything. But she would, <laughs> Minerva. We'll just be like, and then this part goes in here. You can't use this type of material, this type of material, or else, um, you know, sometimes it can explode, which is really dangerous uh, when you try and give it out to somebody. Um, all these things. So, yeah, so so that's pretty much where it all started. And then, and then um, yeah. we'll go into, like, kind of more of how she met up with these people. It's like, so then, well, I was just experimenting with different types of materials, and so I was able to attest so many different things with these um friends of mine and um then i built a cannon and now we're here um so yeah so i'm, I'm very interested in how much i'm going to learn well in barovia to be able to like affect my uh my contraptions but also it's it's a little strange to 
pass through fog and wind up in a separate country or separate plane, however you want to put it. Um, but yes, we heard that you were also a similar thing as you got sent to a different plane and you ended up here? She goes, um, oh no, we, uh, we were all born here. Was it always like this? Is Marco's centuries ago, it was part of a, a larger country. Then the Devil's Strahd came and they say it's a punishment for our ancestors' sins that the Devil has caused the land to go gray and decay. What did they do? Arena goes, who knows? It's all poppycock. No one quite knows where the devil came from, but... Sometimes been, bad people just show up, you know? He's been here for centuries, and knowing his reputation, he probably wasn't invited when he, when he did. But ever since he came, the, the mist surrounds us, and only the... Um, he was not only the, sorry, I'm getting a word. Um, only the Vistani are allowed to come and go as they please. Is Marcos? Um, I think you saw some in the in the tavern. They tend to dress more lively than uh, the common commoners here. Um, some say they made a pact with the Devil Strahd centuries ago, so they earned his favor. But. I don't take much stock in that superstition. Well, I couldn't see wanting a favor for somebody so terrible. So, I'm glad you didn't make a pact yourselves. Irina, you notice Irina kind of grabs at her scarf for a moment, and then continues, grabs her utensils and begins eating again. So I wonder if that means there's some country-sized crater uh, somewhere for where this place used to be. I wouldn't call it a country. It's more of a valley. So I can show you a map if you wish when you, before you start your journey. But um, it but, uh, It's a small country. Right? Yes. Ismark uh, turns to Romaya and goes, um, out of all the, uh, the outside species I've heard about, I, I must admit, we've Never heard of one with such a uh, black skin and, and horns and wings, no less. Well, I am admittedly a special case, even amongst fellow tieflings. Tiefling. I really goes, yes, tiefling, not tiefling, which I've found out. I have to speak to the Fistani who uh, who sold me that um, monster manual. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you must have gotten one of the original versions they reprinted it later with yeah. fixes. it's first it's first edition they were very weird back then <laughs> um, that bolo is really bad at smelling yeah um, as Mark says uh, what was your profession what did what did you do in this sword coast this fur this fey root me yes um I suppose you could call my, um, I could call myself a, a, cor a, a courtesan. Um, oh, is that the word these days? <laughs> they like go silent. And I sleep with men for money. Um, <laughs> they like <laughs> slow their chewing and then like swallow like, like, oh. She'll I, look at, uh, Irina goes, I'm sorry, but the, uh, Irina goes like, well, that means. That's mean you must meet many interesting people. Oh, I've met all sorts. She'll look at, um, before she says that, sorry, she'll, like, because she's sleeping with her for money, she'll look at Ismark and wink, but sometimes for free. <laughs> uh, but yes, no, I've, I've... He quickly takes another bite of rabbit. <laughs> but you can tell him, like, he's blushing a little bit. <laughs> and Irina many gives, stories. Irina gives a little smirk. Um, Irina goes, I'm most curious about you, Mr. 
Mr. Vogel such. No, mister, it's just Vogel such. I imagine Vogel such has just been sitting there as everybody else is eating because he doesn't eat. Uh, uh, maybe you put a bib on or something with, with, like, put the napkin in his in his shirt. But he's not eating or drinking anything. We, of course, had to make him sit down again. Yep, yep. Stop looming! <laughs> I don't know how to not. Is, is Marco's, um... It's my theory that this individual is a revenant. You know, how they wander wander the roads. Have you met many others? He had mentioned he saw one at a distance once, but he, he, mm. he, he, he kept his distance. A revenant. Maybe Everything that's goes, me. Um, the revenants were uh, soldiers at um, Arvin Vostholt. It's where the Order of the Silver Dragon stayed. Were, uh, were housed before they were destroyed by the devil. Just now the survivors under Barovia, unable to complete their task. What killed them? Is Mark as well. I'm no historian, but they say Strahd's armies killed them. Long, long time ago. But you seem to have some sort of body. Revenants are spirits. Yes, I suppose this is a body. He kind of puts his hand like into his the straw part of his chest and just kind of like digs it all the way in and then pulls it back out. Eh, body of some sort, yes. <laughs> I don't think I've been wandering for centuries, years, no, weeks, maybe, days at least. About two weeks, you think, yeah. Two weeks. It died yesterday. Is Mark, Mark. <laughs> it kind of says, um, perhaps around the same time that the devil awoke, awoke from his sleep. you think that this devil is the one who killed me then? Or one at, of his... At this rate, it's a high possibility or it's somebody who work, works for them. The devil has been was asleep in his coffin for nearly a hundred years before he woke it. So... Unlikely. Hmm. Just a theory. I a suppose vampire theory. the search shall continue. Well, on to um, more positive subjects. Um, Mr. Mr. Grood. Yeah. Um, I love your squirrel. Thank you. He is best. <laughs> so In my head, I just thought of that Brooklyn Nine Nine thing, where it's like, <laughs> if I just got this puppy, and if anything happens to it, I will kill everyone here and myself. Um, I think, well, tell me about yourself. What did you do in? Feyrun. You're a uh, what, um, a man of nature, I can see. Because you're yeah. practically covered in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just trying to, like, be one with the world, trying to explore, see how everything is, check out the stars. It's really it. Just kind of go with the flow, you know? I mean, uh, when she hears the word stars... It takes a moment for her to recognize what you mean. She goes, oh, well, I'm afraid you won't see much of the stars here. Occasionally uh, you get a glimpse of them through the through the clouds. Really? Like, you don't even see any stars ever? He goes, that is the land's curse. Whoa. Um... Yeah, don't like that. That's not cool. And like the mood just you know, the mood just turns like really dour now. <laughs> like it's like oh Because you're like, let's do something fun and it's like, oh whoa, bro. Like why? 
Can somebody please pass the salt? For, for what, dude? For what? Please pass the salt. Fine, here it is. I'm just curious to see what happened. Thank you. He'll just take it. He'll just hold it. Staring straight ahead still. Are you going to do anything with that? I am. When? Do you need it back? No, it's just like... I don't know what hey, you all did in your he'll room. Hold the, he'll hold the salt right back at you. Okay. I don't know what you all did in your room, but this guy just stood there the whole time <laughs> in my room. Yeah. And so, like... <laughs> sorry if I seem a little short with him, but, like... Dude, come on. It's pretty much probably what happened. It's just that... <laughs> yeah. you know, just standing there, just, like, responding to whatever you might say at him, but, like, briskly and briefly. Yeah. <laughs> so, like... Oh. I'll, like, I'll, I'll figure it out soon, but, like, it's, you're the first person I met like this. I'm going to take some time to adjust. That's okay. I hold no ill will for your <laughs> adjustment period. That, that always happens with roommates, right? As soon as you become roommates, things get a little sour. I got to sort it out. We might have to split the room down the middle. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, that's see, the I can still be jovial. That's actually the first thing you've said about any situation. Yet. So I'm, do you wanna, I'm optimistic about our whole thing. We'll get it. But yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. But I don't think no. any of you told you about that vampire book you've all read. We can well, hear the whole thing through the room. The okay. walls, <laughs> paper thin. I guess you could. I was maybe playing with a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ha 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 ha. Dinner's mostly been consumed at this point, but Irina does ask um, Vio. It's like, so, Mr. Mr. Vio, I see that uh, it's a violin, right? Uh, yeah. It's like a. Is there a violin? Do you? I I must assume that you play. Yes, I, I'm a musician by trade. Uh, just. For the most part, I just wander from tavern to tavern. Uh, I uh, enjoy uh, going to various uh, uh, places to learn their uh, their local music. Uh, uh, just try to find as much culture as I can. Ms. Mark goes, um, well, you won't, won't find much music here. You've been to the blood on the, on the vine. Uh, if you'd like, I can always bring some to you. Irina's eyes light up. Says, oh, "Oh yes, could you could you play us something?" Uh, scoots his chair back and um, uh, uh, pulls out the violin and uh, uh, plays a um, not so much uh, jaunty but like uplifting uh, song. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of, as you play, we'll, we'll give me a performance check. Yeah. How good can I do with on a uh, stomach full of, uh, of rabbit? Oh. What? Why did you roll that many? Uh, 18. Still pretty good. Yeah, they um, kind one, of listen to silence. Note. Listen in silence, but even though the song isn't meant to be sorrowful, um, you can just tell that they just haven't heard anything like this in, like, like so, like so long. Like a dam is broken. Yeah. And, um, you see, like, a tear run down there, you know, from the corner of their eye. And, um, as they finish, they wipe it away. And he goes... Irina goes, um, is Mark that remind me of fa that reminded me of father? He nods, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vio. My pleasure. I don't know how many here could appreciate that. One thing that you might notice here in Barovia that some individuals are vacant. Vacant. So, vacant, that's not a word. 
Vacant. Vac sorry. We get vacant. We got vacant. <laughs> naked. Or naked. Whoa. <laughs> um They say that there are those in Barovias that just have nothing within them, no passions, no wants, desires, no no soul as it were. And how many could appreciate that the music you just shared with us. But we did. Does he side eye Vogel such as he kinda of says that? You can tell like you're kinda of more than what you seem. Yeah. But like you remember like the bartender? Um, how he just kind of was going through the motions. Yeah. Yeah, it was it's like um he kind of brings like that up as an example. Saying so you walked into that bar and nearly everyone didn't pay attention to you. Even though you're the most fascinating thing to well, the second most interesting thing to happen to this town recently. Don't I've I've met those that have are essentially broken from either uh woes or simply just um, at work and uh, other life things, mm -hmm. but it sounds like you're speaking uh, even uh, something much, much more than that. Well, maybe a little bit of both in this case. Um, but as you finish up dinner, he, uh, they all will retire to their rooms and kind of leave you to your to your own business. Pull we'll such will head back to the boys' room, and then he'll take out. He'll call back his packed weapon, the scythe, and then just take it blade side down and just smack it till it sticks into the like the wood beneath it and so it's sticking up uh Gr Groot's gonna be like go, dude 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 what do you do I need a place to stay it might damage people's houses this is weird what are you doing well perhaps we can fix it in the morning I'll try not to do that from now on or at least to, like, ask permission if there's a cool place. Like, maybe they have a board that's already kind of damaged. They're going to replace anyways. Oh, I think they have one now. Point to the, the damage that I just did. Yeah. Oh. I'll go to my bed then. Okay. Just right over there across the room. And I don't know if it's creepier for you to stare at me or stare away from me the whole night. Do you want? It's up to you. You may decide. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. Okay. We'll see what happens. Vogel Such will basically then, essentially step onto the pole. There's nothing like no footholds or anything, but he could sort of just, sort of, becomes attached to it as a scarecrow would. That's tied up into a, in a. Uh, uh, to like a pitchfork or something um, to a post and just sort of stops moving stares ahead which is probably facing Rude's bed mm. I'm setting up a image real quick he's so gonna I... have the other bed what are you setting up sorry I'm setting up an image real quick I forgot to <laughs> do it sure. Is okay. this okay, Grood? Yeah, it's cool. Does his eyes glow the entire time? Oh, uh, they're they're not like super glowy, like night lights, but there is like a a faint sort of, you know, uh, warmth to them, even in the in the like they never turn off wood. type of thing. Yeah, essentially. You're not going to need to light a candle to uh, if you need to go to the restroom. <laughs> yeah, much. it's like a. Probably during the night, there might be like one strict rude wakes up and be like, ah! and then realize it's you, and then, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Dees will come over and start hiding, hiding nuts in, in my straw body. It's a perfect hiding spot, no one's suspected. Right. <laughs> it's 
kind of like imagining just a shot of the room with Vogel such just staring at Groot's bed and Groot just kind of like trying to get under the covers and like stare in the other direction, like like facing the other direction on their side <laughs> as they sleep. Yeah. One second. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna draw that one. <laughs> Yay! Alright, so let's take a short break. Okie dokie. Because I read over the next session that I forgot to do things for. <laughs> oh no, there's there's nothing to do. We have to make up things as we go. No, we there was just that. a scene I forgot to set up art for it, so. Yeah. Doo -doo. It's the flashback sequence where everybody is a child. We learn their horrible trauma. So, Volus, such you sleep? Nope, I have no... I do not require food, water, or sleep. No, air... Food, air... Sleep. Well, uh... Hold on. Sorry, my phone, phone went off, and it goes to my computer, and... It rings my thing. Ah, anyway, I do not require. Um, uh, hey, where is it? You don't require languages, sleep. abilities, ancestral legacy, deathless nature. Okay, uh, I don't need to eat, drink, or breathe. You don't need to sleep, and magic can't put you to sleep. You finish a long rest in four hours if I spend those hours in active, motionless state during which you retain consciousness. So, like an elf. Like an elf cross with a warforged. I was about to say, Vo, like you normally like trance and meditate. Oh Let's yeah, see. but a pillow helps with that. Pillow does help. Um, Do I get advantage on death saves? Oh yeah, that's the thing about uh, the uh, <laughs> the, reborn the, 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 the ladies get the bed. <laughs> so, um, Vo, as you're in your trance and everyone else while you're sleeping and in boggle such well you're like just motionless uh contemplating who killed you over and over and over again in your head which i'm sure that's how you sleep um you suddenly have a vision and uh the world around you becomes foggy and all of a sudden each one of you are are standing together um, you seem to find yourself in a in a tent lit by candlelight and heavy with incense and before you stands a um, and before you is seated a uh, an old crone whose face is concealed by the cowl of her cloak. And in this shared dream, she goes, Welcome, weary travelers, to my humble tent. You may call me Madam Ava. I have been expecting you. Eva, sorry. Sorry, forget my own name. Madam Eva. The winds of fate have brought you to this land, but do not be fooled. They are not winds of change, but winds of doom. I can see a shroud of darkness descending upon you. The lord of this land knows that you have been trespassed onto his domain, and he has set you in his sights. He is a creature of eternal hunger, and he will not rest until he has claimed your souls. But there is hope yet. I have been blessed with the gift of foresight, and I can see the twisting paths that lie ahead. Seek me at my tent at Sia, at Sia Pool, so that I may read the cards for you to decipher the strands of your fate. Together, we may yet escape this darkness. But be warned, time is running out, and the shadows are growing longer. Will you find me at Sia Pool? And Madame Ava kind of begins to fade away, becomes more foggy as the surroundings just kind of dissipate and you're returned to the uh, the blissful, blissfulness of sleep. And 
You hear a voice echo go. Um, I am not far. Travel west. The path to my tent begins at the place of death. And then as the vision fades more, he goes, He has sensed me. He cannot know of our meeting. Fly, travelers. I shall await you at Steerpool. Is it Seer Pool or Steer Pool? T S E R. Okay. Um, I kind of missed this part. You can ask her a question before she disappears. I'm sorry. Are you the one who killed me? No. Talking about. <laughs> He's out of questions. <laughs> Two yep. more questions <laughs> you get. <laughs> your fates are more than than your own. My vision is obscured, but I can see that your futures are intertwined with the very destiny of the land itself. In conquering this shadow, you may yet find salvation for others as well, and in failure, deliver damnation instead. At that point, she begins to fade away. She goes, He sends me. I must leave. Fly. I shall await you at Tears Pool. Fly. Again. Woo! And she, she masters. <laughs> and with that, um, you actually violently awaken. And uh, heart's beating fast, and you're covered in sweat. And uh, outside is not the... Oh, such, it's just like, what am I covered with? What's going on? <laughs> and uh, outside is not the the dim moonlight, but um, a green glow. Like a tornado is going to happen? Uh, Man, yeah, uh, Man, yeah. Is, is green uh, associated with tornadoes? Yeah, I've seen it once in Toronto. It's pretty scary. Wow. Well, maybe. Is it the, the glowing sea from Fallout? <laughs> do you, do you it's take not like a, that. <laughs> well, do you seek shelter or do you look outside? Vogel's such I, a look, I look outside. outside. Look outside. Yeah. I, I, all, all the windows are barred up, though, right? So we oh, like, oh, peek yeah. through the windows. Well, that's true. It's like, it's, like, um, you see it through, like, some of the cracks. So you would have to go, like, out, outside. I punch one of the window. <laughs> yeah. Uh, window things before realizing oh right i should ask first yes you should Rude. oh my gosh dude like Rude, what? which of these should i open oh my god none of them ah <laughs> let us go to the door then oh jeez, dude <laughs> and then it's like fall well, down make sure it doesn't break anything else <laughs> now big question yeah are, are the three in the girls' room still uh, still dressed in the sleepwear? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> have no, they probably. swapped? Have they swapped clothing? Bold of you to assume Romaya was clothes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she seems the the the, uh, the type to sleep in the buff. She probably has <laughs> socks. Dude, she probably tried to put on Irina's clothing and was like, "Girl, <laughs> this ain't gonna fit." <laughs> He had like one of his marks, like oversized um, hot topic t shirts. Um, an eerie green light um, is seen emitting from the graveyard. From this light emerges a ghostly precision. Wavering images of dotty women toting great swords, wood wise men with slender bows, and dwarfs with glittering axes. And uh, fancily dressed mages with beards and strange pointed hats. All these and more march forth from the graveyard, their numbers growing by the second. They, you see they're marching out of town, and you see a long... This, this march of these green ghosts marching toward um, Castle Ravenloft. Where you know Strahd resides. Have I in my two weeks seen anything like this? Maybe from a distance. Never this close. You're getting a good view from the um, Burgermeister's Mansion. 
I assume these were just fireflies, not remnants of people. Where do yeah. you think they're going? I could, well, they're going to the castle. Wait, but let's ask, uh, you didn't do that. Like, what's going on? Would you like me to ask one of them then? I, I, I start yeah. walking towards. No, no, they're probably yeah. asleep. They're pretty far away, but um, okay. I mean the uh, the, the okay. ghosts. You can't really go and um, meet them. But if you want to step out, um, Ismark, we're at in Irina, like kind of appear behind you and kind of you know grab your shoulder, and he goes. They appeared shortly after the attack on the town. Do they do this? Every night? I've seen them once or twice. It's not every night. But they travel from the graveyard to the castle. If you wait long enough, you might be able to see them fall one by one off the cliff's edge. Irina goes, they say they're adventurers that they strive themselves. Take a quick head count. How many does it feel like there are? Hundreds. Hundreds. Perhaps their problem was they went one by one by one by one. Do I see any clerics? Is Mark. Or paladin? Oh, we see all, all types. In armor, robes, leathers, <laughs> men, women, all types of species. Um, is is Marcos a? I believe they're a warning to remind us all that perished at Strahd's hands. He killed all of these people. Probably not all, all at once. Strahd has been the master of land for centuries, hundreds of years. Whenever someone's foolish enough to go face them, they join the procession. They call it the March of the Dead. We thought it was just myths. Something that happened that might have happened a long time ago. But now we see it with their own eyes. Have you ever talked to any of them? Dare not get close. Let them what? find whatever peace they have in death. Irina goes, they're not at peace, brother. They're tortured. He, his mark tells me that you want to face the devil. And I say, don't. Or you'll end up oh, with them marching one by one to your death. Death has already claimed me once. I don't feel it will claim me again. No, I'm, I'm okay with not fighting him. Well, then do you wish to stay here forever, Vio? No, I'm sure there could always be another way. There could, or there couldn't. <laughs> Ismark notices Romaya. Not wearing anything, I assume. Oh, she probably, if they were getting up to go, she probably would have, like, thrown on, like, oh, no, wrapped she a blanket wouldn't. around yeah, her. Throw, thrown on a shirt. <laughs> wrapped a blanket around her, probably. It'll be like this for hours. I suggest we head back to bed. We have an early morning ahead of us. Saying, um, in the morning we. If I can ask another favor of you, help us bring the coffin of our father to the uh, Church of the Morning Lord, so um, it can be blessed before his burial. Not a, not a problem. <laughs> so Father Donovich can um, can bless the corpse, the body. The body. I'm very sure uh, sure Groot can carry that. 
Epic guy. You got it. And he goes, and before that, I'm going to gather up the men I recruited and, and search for any sign of Gertrude surrounding the town. But I fear maybe too late. You wasted a day waiting for that. If you find the trace of them, it may not be one of... It's not dangerous at night living. to head outside the town. Yes. Saying, trust me. Saying, perhaps if I lived up to my namesake more, I would have went there alone, but better and better as a group, I'd say. And he heads back upstairs. That sounds like leadership to me. Teamwork makes the dream work. And Randy goes, you mustn't judge him too much. It really is dangerous. She, she's just like watching the uh, the, go, the oh, green ghost. Like, it really is dangerous. It, it, it looks dangerous even being in town, glancing outside at the wolf tracks. <laughs> you it's noticed. not much safer in the woods. She says, you, you noticed that. Kind of hard to miss. And, um, did your brother mention uh, did my brother mention why uh that they were spying and apparently not very well since you're not supposed to show that you're spying perhaps on our ju journey I'll tell you more but Joey, there's a reason still... we have go ahead say perhaps on our journey I can tell you the story but I don't Is like she's having... still wearing her scarf. Sorry, I keep you keep pausing oh, dramatically. Shut up. <laughs> yes, she's wearing her scarf. Okay. You, you haven't seen her without it. Yeah. What's so interesting about a scarf in a vampire movie? I didn't want to ask what she's wearing because that would have just been weird. She goes up. Uh, back to bed with us. Uh. <laughs> and hopefully, we don't have. Any more dreams about weird old ladies? And I'll be comments while going upstairs. Did you, Did you see that too? See what? I also, I also saw that bizarrely. So did I. Um, in a tent? Old, uh, weird in old, her old tent. lady? Something about... Star pool, seer pool, and to find her, and she's blessed with foresight. Um. <laughs> okay. Something tells me that wasn't a dream. Then. I never thought it was a dream, as I don't sleep, and I saw it. A vision, communication. <laughs> Uh, Arena, what, what's to the west of here? And well, to the west is uh, she kind of like is, is listening with interest, saying, "Well, to the the west is uh, Balaki, where we'll be be heading, and uh, on the way is is a uh, Seer Pool. That's where no. it's a the Sani camp, and I've heard of this. Uh, did you mention the name? Eva. Uh, I don't. Th did we ever get the name? Madam Eva. Madam Eva. Oh, okay. Yeah. Saying, uh, yeah, Mad Madam Eva, I've heard the name before. She's a a, a, a soothsayer, a, a fortune teller. Sometimes a member of the village will uh, will seek her guidance. Well, um, I think we're gonna have to uh, stop by and uh, say hello uh, on our way over. She yawns well she yawns like what is on the way? We will need to make camp somewhere. I'd see no better place, but we'll, dis we'll discuss this after the funeral. And if uh, yeah, go get some sleep. Thank you. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep after all this commotion. <laughs> you see, I, I don't see to get it. That was good. Yeah. 
I'm getting better at comedy. Right, but you all gain the benefit of a long rest. Yay! Ooh. Do, we, do we level up? We probably level up. Do we level up? No. No. Uh, what, what have we done to justify leveling up? We have, have had dinner. Yeah. Um, it's a big dinner. <laughs> so I'm wondering about uh, magical tinkering. Yeah. What do I need to? Because I have three. So I'll, These are two. I'll, I'll let this be a more permanent one. Since this is kind of story based. Yeah. And and for the most part, it's it's mostly flavor. But like, I'll, I'll keep this as like a permanent um, enchantment. Oh, okay. I see. Because I'm like, oh, it doesn't re set as a long rest or anything. But now I get it. It's because I do it, and then I would have to like undo one in order to do another one. Yeah, yeah. the uh, maximum of three. I'm definitely gonna get rid of that, kids. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all, all of your abilities are pretty much like that you can uh, like yeah. the um if you wanted to re replace the uh the auto reloading crossbow with something else you uh after a long rest you dismantle it and build something yeah so that's when your um your um uh enchant non enchantments um feature traits plus feature no, what, what, what do artificers do? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, the, the infuse item In, as infusions. well. Infusions, yeah, infusions. That's You do that on a long rest, so if you ever want to change those out. I think you should probably keep the ones you have, but um, if you ever want to change them out, you'll do it during a long rest. Okay. Cool, thank you. Yep. <laughs> so, morning comes... Um, shortly before dawn, um, as your, um, Ismark wakes you all up, and she goes, uh, he goes, um, I've set the men off on the rescue mission, but, um, I had to excuse myself to help prepare father's body. Um, Groot, if you could, uh, help with the coffin. Will do, just tell me what I need to do. There's a, a a church on the edge of town, that of of one of the uh, of the morning lord. That's where um, that's where Father Davovich will uh, will bless the body. Um, yeah, got it. He says, "Uh, do forgive him if he seems odd. He recently lost his son during the attack. He um." His son was Doru, the one that led the mob to the castle. He never returned. Got it. Yeah, grief does a lot of stuff to you. And Irina goes, and he was a good friend. All right, all right. I'll keep this all in mind. Is Marcos? It was very unlike him to become so excitable. With that, uh, with that visitor about vampires and Van Richten, that Van Richten character he idolized so much. Who, who's this Van Richten guy? We, uh, oh, um, sorry, Groot. Sorry, we, we found this, and Minerva's gonna still have that page of the book. And yeah. Like, I, uh, took this because it seemed like it would be very helpful for us, but, um, here, would you like to read this, Scrood? Can you read? Yep, I mean, yes, it was I like, uh, it says they found the uh, part of the book that, that Doru was, was reading. Um, well, let's see if I can find his name real quick. Um, there's a traveler named... You said it earlier, I forget. I didn't write it down in my notes. Alanik. It's a traveler named Alaric that uh, Doru was was um, hanging around a lot. He was staying at the Burgermeister's mansion, and um, he was staying in the room where he found the page. Um, Alanik Ray. So. And, and like, oh, they did say like they haven't seen an outsider in a while. Um, but he did travel with the Visani from the mist at one point. Um, it wasn't too unusual since he was with the Visani and he was human. So, you know, he did... Even though he was an outsider, um, he didn't, like, stand out as much as, as you guys do. 
Um, so, is this character's name Van Richten, or is he someone from Richten? No, the author of the uh, of the book Dover was obsessed with was by a uh, legendary vampire hunter named Rudolf Van Richten. And with the knowledge from the book, he was convinced he could slay the devil in this coffin. That's when Strahd set his uh, sent one of his minions to the town. Um, given us an ultimatum that three months to prepare for an attack didn't seem to be enough well I convinced most of them to stay and he, you remember the what he said at the at the inn how he gained the um the title of the lesser because he convinced a lot of the villagers to like stay and fight and um you know, it just ended up getting most of them killed. You never split the party. Maybe says that, um... Very dangerous. Doru, this Alakin, and a, and uh, one of his friends named Esh, um, Escher left to the castle, plus, like, an angry mob with pitchforks and torches and all that stuff. Um, uh, Such will get on the other side of the, um, coffin that Groot is on to pick up the other, uh, fall. Oh, thanks, I dude. I assumed you needed, uh, two. This is a two-man job. <laughs> Deez is hanging off one of the edges, like, pretending to help. He's <laughs> <laughs> playing supervisor. <laughs> Could someone get the door for us? Looking for another name. Um, dude. Rudolf Van Richtum, and then I think there was um, Donner. And there, there was a... Uh, What's in? The servant that came was a dusk elf named Rahadin. Rahadin. So elves are... There are elves in, in Barovia. All of them are... Um, Dusk elves, they kind of have um, dark brown, dark, like grayish brown skin. See, that's why well, I was a little, a little taken aback from you, Vio. I've never seen a uh, an elf with such a light complexion before. Thank you. As you approach, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Minerva's kind of thinking, and she's going to say it out loud. It's just like, it seems like if somebody were to get that angry, I feel like maybe those who went inside might have gotten a little too close for his own comfort. Maybe they didn't fail entirely, and it scared him. You think that the, the devil was scared of an angry mob? Moral's irritation be woken from his slumber. That they dared even try. Saying the, the sins of the one punish the many. In Strahd's eyes. And he kind of gestures around to the, the still damaged town. Yeah, that could also be it. So, yeah, I guess it could be that. Yeah. Uh, well, best not to get my hopes up, but still, possible theory. Um, I'm going to show you the, the map of the town. Let's see, let's see here. So, it's a nice little town. Nice little town. Nice quiet town. But you see the Burgermeister Mansion, mansion way in the south. Um, Blood on the Vine is kind of near the middle of town. You arrived around here in the west. Um, and the church is way up here. That's where, you, in the distance, you saw the... Um, 
You saw the ghosts, like, come from the graveyard, parade through the streets, uh, like, out into, um, the path outward. But again, like, you don't see many people, really any, outside. Um, occasionally you see the... A face kind of look out from a creaked open door that's ajar, but then quickly, quickly close as you, as you walk by. This mark goes on. Might be a while until people are brave enough to venture out in the streets again. At least the common person. Uh, uh, good, good reason too. So, uh, but he says most people, because when you get closer to the church, um, you do see a rather large figure kind of emerge from the mist, kind of in a slouched position. Is an extremely large man, almost as big as you, Grood. Kind of hands in pockets. He's just taking a walk out in the misty streets before the before the sun rises. Hey. <laughs> so. Almost everyone. Some venture out. And this is like when you're approaching the, um... Well, actually, let me just put him on... On the it's church's just... thing here. Hold on. There's like a really big guy up ahead. Should we say hi? Should we just say hi? Could really probably go around him or even over him. Okay, maybe not that second one, dude. I just told you he's super big. So as you, as you approach the church, um... Is Mark. He's a knock on the doors. And uh, as, as Mark's knock echoes throughout the cold air, a voice rings out from the darkened street. Your voice goes, He won't come out. And that's when you see the um, the silhouette of the, of the large man. A hulking silhouette steps forward from the mist. A young man, tall and brawny. His shaggy brown hair falls messily across his face, and his crooked teeth glint in the moonlight. Though muscles ripple beneath his tunic, there is a lightness and immaturity to his posture that that belays his strength and size. The young man fidgets with the hem of his tunic as your eyes fall upon him. And not it's two weeks ago. And, um, Ismark goes, um, Oh, Periwimple, what are you doing st stroll out so early in the in the dark like this? He goes, Oh, I found it hard to sleep lately, so I decided to take a walk. You know, ever since my parents... Well, you, you, you know, you know how, it's like, Irene goes, Yeah, we, we know, Periwimple, we're, we're so sorry. And he goes, yeah. Really sad about the whole thing. Who are your friends here? They look different. My name is, my name is Vogel Such. I like your hat. I don't even know if it's mine, but it came with me. We well, didn't steal it, did you? No. It came with me. I don't understand what you mean. None of us do. Um, <laughs> Vio, pleasure. He, his eyes turn to you, Romaya, and he goes, Oh, you're very pretty. Oh, and aren't you sweet? Oh, he kind of like fidgets with his tuning some more. He goes, Oh, thank you. Um, excuse me, young man, how old are you? I'm, uh, one twenty-two. Why, you're quite big, even for twenty-two. It's you must be a full-grown lad now. Yeah. It's uh, what my mom always said, and what my uncle says. He runs a shop in town. I help him carry the heavy things. That's very good of you. That's very nice. 
Um, if you come by, we can give you a. We can we can tell them we're friends. Are we friends? Yes. Yes, we are such. And no, he is not the one who killed you. Don't you dare say that to that young man. <laughs> is this true, friend? He says, um, well, my uncle Bildrath will, uh, would love to have new new customers. And you recognize that's the name of the, the mean guy from the bar. Yeah. Um. Uh, but but his mark goes, um, uh, Periwimple, we, uh, we must see the father. You say he's not seeing anyone. He goes, oh, no. Ever since, ever since the bad things came, he hasn't been himself. He's been, I oh, just came by to say a prayer for mom and dad, and kind of like kind of shuffles of feeding, and he yelled, yelled at me, telling me to get out. He said I was being too loud. It wasn't like him. He's usually so nice. That is no way to treat a friend of Vogel such. I think we should have a talk with him. He looked different. Mm. He's usually wearing that, uh, usually wears that, um, that symbol around his neck. It looked like a sun. And he points to some, to like the, uh, the sun symbols on the walls of the church. It was, I always liked it. It was always so bright compared to everything else. But he didn't have it. Is that a recognizable uh, sign? Give me a religion check. Do you want it? I don't know why I'm doing it twice. <laughs> Seems to be happening it, a lot. It sometimes bugs out like that. Bio, the most religious of all of us. <laughs> so, um... Maybe not, like, none of you really follow this religion, but it is actually extremely common symbol in Faerun, um, that of Lathander the Morning Lord. Oh, and, okay. and, and you've heard that, that name spoken a few times. He was a uh, Father Dorovich would tell stories when we were little, me and Doru, about how the Morning Lord would bring the sun again. And the light was so pretty when it glinted off it. He never let me touch it, though. He said it was very special. I'm sure it is. Well, I wanted to say a prayer for my friend Doru this morning, but he didn't answer. Perhaps he's just under a lot of stress. Well, it, his I'm son... Sure it's nothing to do with you. Oh, I can tell why he's sad, though. His son... You know, he, his son, just like mom and dad, they died. And he, like, gets I a sniffle, sniffle a little bit. I died once, and I think it was sad. Irina, like, gives, you know, gives him a hug. Saying, we're so Whenever sorry. Goes... We're so sorry, Periwipple. We loved your parents very much. And he goes, thank you. Minerva goes over to Vogel such and, like, angrily whispers... Bubble such when somebody says that somebody they love dies, you don't then center the conversation around yourself, okay? Don't but, do that again. But it happens. To me. At this point, Perry Wolf will notice his knees. <laughs> and he goes, Oh, look at the little critter. It's everyone's favorite. It's D's. <laughs> he reminds me of, of the monkey that Alan, that Mr. Alanek had. But he, he's monkeys, smaller, yeah? and he had fuzzier tip. Well, I've <laughs> never seen one before he arrived. But it was like that, but he had a... Uh, you know, the tail wasn't as fluffy, and he had longer arms, and he... His face was bigger, and he starts, like, listening off. Like, <laughs> all the differences the difference between and a squirrel squirrels. and a monkey, yeah. <laughs> he let me play with him. He was very fun. Oh, I miss yeah, him, this... too. She's a... Uh... This is a very cool guy. Yeah, definitely not a monkey in any any way. Uh, uh, 
Yeah. Um, I think we're going through a lot, big guys. Yeah. Oh, why do all so many good people go away? Yeah, dude, do you want? It's not even fair, right? It's just not fair. Then he goes, um, if you do talk to Father Darovich, tell, tell him that Perry Wimple is thinking of him and his and, and Doru for me. Will do. I would come in myself, but I don't want him to yell at me again. Yeah. We'll That's make sure one. he apologizes for that. Yeah. That would be nice. He goes, oh, I got to get to the shop before it opens. Uncle gets uh, gets cross if I'm late. It best not make that happen. See ya. He's only like that because my mother died. That's, He's usually yeah. not so agitated. That's fair. You know, like, it's a big loss that Diggs had. Little such is about to say something, but he looks over at Minerva and then doesn't. Glaring, glaring check in on Vogel such, and and then uh, gives a nodding like good when he like doesn't do anything. <laughs> but um, Perry Wipples says his goodbye and it's, disappears in the foggy street. So Groot's gonna turn to everybody and be like, so like. How many of you want to bet that dude became a vampire? Oh, oh because of the things that's written on the sheet? Rude? It was, yeah, it's the thing, like, he, the religious symbols, like, doesn't wear. That was very specific for that guy to bring up. I'm with, that's my, I'm betting that's going to happen. That's my bet. So who, who's got the sticks or whatever? I have who, some. Well, it would be kind of ironic because all the uh, symbols that he'd pointed to on the the church would be like would then be keeping him in there and would explain why he hasn't left in two weeks. So maybe, maybe not. Let's just go in there throwing stakes in people's hearts that we can't pull out. Okay, so let's just treat him like a grieving man, and if he grows teeth while we're talking to him, we'll be ready. Uh, yeah, I guess it's pretty that fair. Does sound like the diplomatic approach. So, Talk to me if you need a stake and a hammer. So, I, have I will. Several. Where um, did you get them? They came with me, like the hat. <laughs> Atop a slight rise against the roots of the pillar stone that supports Castle Ravenloft stands a gray, sagging edifice of stone and wood. This church has obviously weathered the assaults for evil for centuries on end, for centuries on end and is worn and weary. A bell tower rises towards the back, and a flickering light shines through the holes of the shingled roof. The rafters strain feebly against their load. The heavy wooden doors of the church are covered with claw marks and scarred by fire. Could somebody get the door for me and Grood? Okay, this is going to be carrying. one of the most intense churches I have ever seen. We are in map mode, so you can move your um, token around. I should probably be next to Grood. If you want. I got the we're, door. Car yeah. we're carrying a, we're carrying a coffin. Yeah, Irene is Minerva. over behind you with the coffin. Minerva will get, it seems like it's a double door, so Minerva will get the other door. Right. Thank you. The door is open to reveal a 10-foot wide, 20-foot long hall leading to a brightly lit chapel. The hall's the hall is unlit. Which kind of seems opposite of what just said. The hall is unlit and reeks of mildew. Four doors, two on each side of the hall, lead to adjacent chambers. You can see that the chapel is strewn with debris, and you hear a soft voice from within reciting a prayer. Up 
Well, we are good... still carrying, we and Groot are still carrying the coffin, yeah. right? Or did you yeah. say it's, it's behind us? Okay. The sound of mumbled prayers stops, and a hoarse, tired voice rings through the chamber from the figure kneeling behind the altar. He goes, I cannot offer the blessing you seek. Go and leave this accursed place in peace. That's good. We're not asking for one. Looks like we are. As you see, Father yeah. Donovich um, kneeling at the altar. Start stepping in. Yeah. I gotta. I, I have to be in tandem with Groon because we're, we're carrying we're... the thing. You can see the, this, this man right here. Oh, yeah. really nice what was that? <laughs> A uh, really good painting, and also he seems in good health. <laughs> All right, what do you do as you enter? Start uh, heading towards him with the, the coffin. Minerva will really... walk behind them. Yeah. Did we see really? that everything's like smashed in here? <laughs> oh yeah, like everything smashed up. It was in the description, but yeah, everything. It's like someone had a fight in here. Yeah, okay. Um, we were told to bring you this. Hey, dude, maybe we should slow up a bit. Just slow. Hey, hey, stop pulling. Like, okay. like I just pulled What are you leave. bringing into my church? Uh, is is Mark's father? Um, I, f I forget. His, uh, Colin. We've been calling him Carl. <laughs> Colins, his name. Yeah. Is Mark and says like a Father Donovich, we bring Colin's remains. He goes oh, Yes. Who did? But I'm afraid I cannot help you. You should leave at once. And, and why can't you help? It's none of your concern. Rude, like, looks at them knowing, like, mm? Mm? Uh, <laughs> Probably the Empire. <laughs> Irina steps, like, pushes through you guys and goes, like, Father Donovich, we need your blessing before he is buried to purify and sanctify the body. So if evil spirits don't claim him after death. Groot will make a point that if she tries getting past, like, Rude, she's, he's going to try and, like, hold her back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she's not in front of us. He finally, like, starts taking notice and he goes, Outsiders. Interesting. Uh, I grieve for your father. But I cannot help you. Not since... The attack. Yeah. Why not? Surely a man of your profession can give a simple blessing to a corpse. What kind of foul creature do you bring into my church to the church of the morning lord? He kind of stands oh, up and starts... Swirl. I'll point to D's. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, he's talking about you and he's like coming towards us. Oh. You, you look oh. creepy, dude. Lower or, the uh, the coffin, not to drop it, but to just straight up put it to the ground and sort yeah. of lead a groove that I hope he does as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to match you with that. Yeah, yeah. As Mark goes on, Lord. Father Donovich, I know he might be unusual in appearance, and I do think there's something otherworldly about him, but he is not a evil creature like the ones that attack the town. At least I. I put my faith in that he is here to help us. Yeah, he's, uh, he's pretty harmless. I, just watch him fight and find out. It's true. <laughs> I... We've never seen him hurt a soul. <laughs> I only wish to harm those who killed me, or protect those who killed me, or get in the way of between me and the one who killed me. Essentially, nobody here in town. At this point, Ismark and Irene are kind of seeing the damage. And 
Irina goes, or as Mark goes, um, uh, Father Donovich, I was unaware that the church suffered so much damage from the attack and that they even made their way in such a holy, into such a holy place. Um, request, um, is there any damage to the walls or, like, structure of the building? Like, if somebody managed to break in? Um, give me a, uh, investigation check. I assume broken windows are going to be very low DC. <laughs> Good that they are, I hope. <laughs> you don't know how much about the structure of churches, but you are right. Like, none of the windows are broken. No holes in the wall. All the damage seems to be contained, like, within this one room. And you start some evidence of, of you know, damage from the outside. But, like, nothing is that would indicate, like, what you see in here. So you want, well, you want to follow up on that? Or? What did happen here? Um... Father Donovich seems a little hesitant. And, uh... Ismark goes, Father, please, these are our friends. You can trust them. Something obviously happened here. And if Donovich, we meant any sort of ill will, we would have done it by now. She is not wrong. You two together saying things sometimes. It's not fool! <laughs> and, um... You see his expression change from like kind of kind of the anger he was feeling before and just one to sadness now. And he goes My Doru, my boy. You thought he never returned from Ravenloft? He did. At least something that resembled him. During the final days of the attack. A monster wearing my boy's skin was delivered to the church. Tried to kill me. I managed to trap him in the Undercroft. He says, The devil did something to my boy, Miss Mark. It was him had the symbol, holy symbol of the morning lord that I gave him before he left on his foolish crusade. That's why I can't perform the rites for you. Because ever since she returned, I, morning lord doesn't speak to me. For what I... What I did to my why? son... Why do you keep him here, then? He is a monster. Damn. Bogo Such? Bogo, one sec, one sec. One, sorry, ignore that he said... I'm going to... We're just going to walk over <laughs> here. You continue that conversation. Bogo Such! It's, it's a thing where... If something... If you've lost something very dear, and you have something that at least looks like something you've lost, you're going to hold on to it, because at least you have the reminder. It's part of being human, Volga Such. Maybe you haven't been human or never were human. Maybe it's not even about being human, as there's tieflings and orcs with us. There's something about being alive, where when something dies, a part of you dies with it. So seeing something yes, that could be your son, almost alive, is still better than death. All right? Hard facts. <laughs> Just leave that grieving man alone. <laughs> he thinks for a moment and says... If I were to die, what would you keep of me? Oh, ah, your scythe, handful of straw. I'll figure it out when it happens. I'm very much an in-the-moment type person. I would keep your glasses. They remind me of you. I like that it's already a thought that he's had. Good. I won't be needing them anymore. So you have my full permission only after I'm dead. So as you're having this little yeah. argument back and forth, um, right. Ismark and Irina um, <laughs> kind of react to this news that, like, Doru um, wasn't killed, but, you know, returned back as a monster. And uh, Irina goes, um, 
Father Darovich, did Doru return as a, a vampire spawn? And uh, the father, the father goes, he's no son of mine anymore. But I can't face him again to retrieve my symbol. Don't have the strength. If I had my symbol, and Doru was whatever's down in the Undercroft is slain and put to rest, then I am certain the Morning Lord will speak to me again, and I we can bury your father properly. Uh, it gl glances to the rest of them. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, I think we can do this. Um, anything to help out a grieving father? Yeah. I yep. start. Vogel such starts reaching for the um, the stakes. Wait, as much stakes. <laughs> the, the wooden oh, stakes. Some. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. <laughs> I have. I actually have nine because of my the background <laughs> I took actually comes with them. I just happen to have wooden sticks. Wooden sticks. Um, I was told to bring these out if somebody grew fangs. I'll hand some to Minerva. Thank you. Irina goes. Don't remember the page. They can only be, wooden stakes are only effective when they are asleep in their coffin or their grave. Hmm. What is... Um, Better give those back then. <laughs> Donovich, yeah, use those say, um, would you bring peace to my son? Yes. Yes, I think we would. Do you have any some, like, running water somewhere? The nearest river is miles away. No, you must slay him where he is. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what, okay, what does the paper say? Uh, okay. Sunlight. Yeah, that's running not water. Not happening. Um, inviting him to a residence. Or being uninvited to a residence. Yeah. Wait, if we throw him into a house. Uh, <clears throat> we um, throw him into a courtyard. He's stuck there. <laughs> um, not garlic, though. That's not a thing. Um, Ismark says, uh... That's more an allergy. <laughs> yeah. All vampires allergic to garlics. It just gives them, like, a rash, you know. <laughs> um, Ismark says, so Irina says, I mean, I think you should stay here. I don't want you anywhere near a vampire at the moment. And she goes, I actually agree. And Ismark turns to you and goes... Fear I not have the, I don't have the constitution to face my old friend as he is. I don't think I would have the heart to slay him. But if worse comes to worse, I shall aid you. But here I'm about to look after my sister. Otherwise, um, show us uh, where he's locked up, and then everyone clear out. Just really quickly before we do that, so we've we've surmised that we don't have any running water and we don't have any sunlight, and he'll just shrug off normal mortal wounds. Um, I, I I don't think he's a full vampire, um, but vampire spawn. He did say vampire yes. spawn. What does that mean, dude? See, he's also he's been down there for a couple of days, so he's probably very hungry too. So he might not be at full strength. It's been nearly two yeah. weeks. He said, "Yeah, yeah." Um, All right, then. If, if you're asking what a vampire spawn is, um, Irina will say, uh, I think, yes, a, a vampire spawn is not a true vampire. It's more of a servant of a vampire. Okay, cool. That's good to know. But they still have vices, the same thirst for blood. Nasty, big, pointy teeth. Pointy <laughs> limbs. Um, All right, I feel a little bit more comfortable now. Um, I'm sure it'll still be tough. Donna Finch will again kneel before the altar. He goes, I shall pray for you. That's some prayer, dude. 
Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Minerva is ready to go. He, she, he will uh, provide you with a key that will unlock the trap door to the undercroft. And he points you to this room right here. Lead the way, Minerva. Absolutely, I can't wait. All right, well, here we go. Can't a guy who would always take forward and then protect everyone. Man, that'd have been cool. Only he wasn't yeah. such a terrible creature. Anyways, here I am. <laughs> and instead, we got a zap brand again. <laughs> I'm not actually made of straw. I made of velour. All right, so enter this room. Unlock the um. Lock the door. <laughs> and like this, this moldy, earthy smell. Um. Like assaults you as you open up the trap door and that staircase below. It reminds you of like the basement of the death house. That like a. Uh, does that earthy smell of that basement? Nobody ever properly ventilates. <laughs> and you are now over here. You soon see. Um, Ooh, candlelight okay. from the chapel above slips through the cracks, but there are no sign of any creatures in the gloom. And you can tell this this um this room is mostly very dark. Um. But those with dark vision, um, you think you see a figure in this corner of the room. Everyone give me a, uh, those with a dark vision, give me a perception check. Ooh, I do not have dark vision. Neither does Minerva. I think I do, yes I do. Tifa, Are you? Say, yeah. Yay, orc. So was it perception? Perception, yeah. Um, as you're glancing around the room, um, a young man's voice, strained and tired, echoes from the darkness above. You've come to, you've come to kill me, haven't you? And as you look in the direction of the voice, um, Ramaya, uh, you see Doru huddled in the corner of the top of, of the of the uh, ceiling of the room, like he's sitting in a corner, but he's up in the up on the ceiling, kind of huddled in like a fetal position. Uh, from what I've heard, you someone already did. At this point, he'll uh, he'll turn around. You see, like like this these um like this red glow glowing glint. In a, of his eyes kind of illuminate that part of the room. Assume one of you will light a torch at. Um, <laughs> Definitely Minerva because yeah. she can't see anything. Or use one of your um, uh, tinker things to make a little, little lamp. Cantrip light, light equals yeah. lantern. From the darkness from the of, the, of the cross beams above, a figure unfurls itself like a moth from its cocoon. Moving like a spider as it lowers itself slowly to the ground. As it comes into the faint light, the shadow resolves in the form of a young man, his youthful features strikingly reminiscent of Father Adonovich. His skin is a ghostly pale, with dirt and grime streaked across his face. His clothes are ripped and worn, and his hair is, un is an unkempt mess of tangles and knots. His eyes are red and bloodshot, his gaze darting from face to face. A leather cord hangs from his neck, holding a bloodstained bronze sunburst that rests against his chest. He swallows and licks his lips, a pair of pointed fangs poking through. If you want to kill me, I won't stop you, he says, his voice cracking. I do have a request first. This is who you right see. Here. <laughs> oh. oh. This ought to be interesting. 
No one understands me. That is really intense for like a character painting. Mm-hmm. Crawling in my skin. <laughs> but he like kind of keeps the corner. And what request is that? I want to see if I'm still human. How do we test that out? You think I'm still human? I've been able to resist the temptations. But even now, I it's, it's not in you, it's not on you. Blood. Yes. Probably not human. He <laughs> takes a step forward. Like, he's kind of like crawling. He's still on his hands and knees. He goes, I know I can't resist it. Is he still on the ceiling? No, he's on the floor at this point. Okay. He goes, I know I can. Um, and he takes a, a crawls forward more. Leave me, sorry. don't you? I, I'm sorry, no. Uh, me being a human, you can't crawl on the ceiling and act like this. You aren't human anymore, Doru. I'm sorry. I, I feel inside of me. I'm resisting his power over me, the devil's power. He's distracted. The eyes are not on me. So he starts licking his lips. And control it! You see? No, you can't. I will. Volosich will actually step forward at this point, and he will take out. A mirror. Hand mirror. Tell me, what do you see in here? And I'll point it towards the man creature. Do you see a human? He's probably not aware of what you're trying to do, so he... I'm holding up a mirror. Does he have a reflection? No, I know, but he's like... He doesn't like... He's like... I'll prove to you. I'll show you what what's in this mirror. And he he stands up. Um, and he's like hunched over. His his, and he like looks really um. um he, he's got artist posture. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> hey. like. You can tell he's um. He's like wasting away. He has like a hard time walking on two feet. He goes like resisting the urge to feed on the rats and the bugs. I'll show you that I'm human. And he uh, he looks in the mirror. And like he just kind of stares blankly. His head tilts. His eyes go wide. And he goes, don't see anything. I don't see anything in the mirror. This mirror only shows human. It's no. No. My name is Doru. Doru, Doru Donovich. Name he goes, my father was Doru. a preacher. He goes, father, I was going to be married. Doru. In, in, in this point, he, he does like what he does in his in his um in his painting. He like grabs the side of his, his head, like his his brain is burning, and he's like, "No, I'm human, human." He starts like, starts, like just and... shaking his head violently. And what would happen if you're wrong? What would happen to your father? What would happen to your fiance? Gertrude. I never hurt Gertrude. But you could. But I tried to hurt my father. I tried to bite him. But not anymore. I'm getting better. I'll show you. I'll show you. You don't yes. get better from death, unfortunately. It's true. I can speak from experience. (laughs) Get well soon. Ramaya, what do you what do you think of this? She's definitely like freaked out. Uh, She's really seen too much of this kind of stuff before, Mm -hmm. Um, and she's just kind of like hanging back, unsure of what to do or say, especially knowing that Gertrude is missing. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, um, he goes. But she's yeah. not gonna say that out loud. Obviously, she's keeping that to herself. Is it fair to say you're you're all like not encouraging him? No, yeah. no, no, very discouraging. In a like you're encouraging him to accept the truth. He goes. Um, I guess the... Minerva, Minerva will pull out the the page that he used to read. And, and we'll say the line, And those their fangs kill become vampire spawn. A ravenous creature with a vampire's hunger for blood. His, his withered away hand, like, kind of grabs at his, his fang. He starts, like, starts, like, stroking it almost lovingly at first, but then he starts tugging at it. He goes, No! No, this is not who I am. It's not who I am. Quick. You need a tonic to save yourself. Drink, Whoa! Drink this. He goes. Where, you... did, uh, where did you get Ben Richton's page? See, it it's, it says that I can be saved, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Not on this page. I'm sorry. Prove it to you. Prove it to you. He goes. I am actually. He points to Vo. <laughs> he points to Vo. He goes. Prick, prick your finger. Oh, don't do that, dude. Just let the blood flow from your veins so I can show you that I can resist it. Like I've resisted all this, all these days without reading, I can still do it. I'm not attacking you now. I'm being very nice, being very polite. And though I want, I want to so bad. He goes, do it. Break your finger. Glances at everyone else. Just like, like head shakes of like, don't, don't do it. Like a lot of like head shakes. Yeah, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> do, do you? Okay, you're resisting it. Um, yeah. Do you want to spend the rest of your life resisting? Well, well he'll he'll say uh, he kind of um. Clutches at the holy symbol. He goes, see, I still wear the symbol. Um, while you're here, right? Your father wants the symbol. If you do the test, regardless if I succeed or fa- fail, I will give it to you. You have my word as a son of a of a of a of a priest. The, the, the life of my beloved Gertrude. That's what's the test? Prick, uh, prick, prick your finger finger. finger and see if you yeah. can resist the temptation of blood. Uh, I'm going to regret this. That also takes five steps back and uh, just uh, pokes his, uh, pokes one of his fingers uh, on the uh, tip of his rapier. Okay. <laughs> is your arms that long? Duru is going to roll a check. They're not that long. He doesn't have to hold it by the handle for that. He just has I to thought that was funny. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Since none of you were very supportive, have a hard time. Yeah, we're. I'm not supportive of this. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that's oh it's the one d six. Okay. Well, it's not a natural one, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second you prick your finger, his pupils kind of go wide. His mouth goes slack. He begins drooling. He goes. Perhaps. I was mistaken. And he will lunge forward towards you, Vio. But that's I attempt to... okay. but that's where we'll continue next week. Unless you unless you guys want to do a combat. It's one guy. I mean you can do a combat. I'm I'm okay with combat. I think we can we can well okay, so be, because I'm a player and I heard you say did you support him and it affected his roles, mm. Burn is like is there a way to make him human? As far as like me as a character, I have. It just says that he's been killed. We might be able to with like greater greater restoration. Do you have that? We'll have to no, do this. He doesn't have that. <laughs> we'll have to do this next week. So as Doru lunges towards you, it's obviously that he cannot he cannot resist yeah. the scent of blood. Bobby, I was gonna try and give him a tonic. What was the tonic? Back. Holy water. Oh, okay, I was like, dude, what do you make him just 
drink it and burn them from the inside. Hey, you look thirsty. <laughs> well, you have it in your inventory, so you can use it in the battle. Well, I was trying to do that, but you were monologuing, so I didn't, couldn't get right. it in. <laughs> why, why did you? Why did you open the path? Well, towards okay. So were you at the ready to do that? I was trying to do that, but I mean, he was continuing, so I so I stopped. But uh, I, what I would do at this point is try and grapple him before he could attack Vio. Yeah. So that, that'd Groot, be my next thing. Hence, I was standing in the way. Yeah, Groot is making fun of him for just like having more stuff in his pockets. I'm like, where did you get that? Well, it's not that late. Like, you, you, you guys just want to do? He's, he's want to do the combat now. Now that. Um... Yeah. Uh, the suspense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He's frozen would, in midair. Does still, the, it does the yeah. matrix? Uh... I would still you, request you, that you, I can you, stand you, right you, here, where I was. Okay. Well, because we'll I I would try to grapple him. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll figure it out next week. Well, we'll give okay. me a quick uh, strength. Okay. Strength athletics. Thing. Yeah, athletics. Oh, just rolling like garbage. I got yeah. a natural twenty on a freaking. He rolls yeah, a, fif a 15, a so he, um, yeah. will just pass you as he goes toward the VO. Yeah. All right, this will, we'll continue next week. Blah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Our first I vampire. Think such, I think Vogel such and Minerva are going to be good friends. So with all the stern talking to you, you're going to get? Yeah. So the little mini, the little mini game with that is, um, was, um, you're more encouraging about his tests than his roles didn't have to be as, as high. Yeah, I'm not going to encourage that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, like as a character, I couldn't. And with then, all the info I did have. But like, I'm interested to see like how this is going to turn out if like, do we actually have to kill him? I know that's what the dad wants, but I don't know. We're going to have to wait till next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah. Um, he, he seemed fine short term, but long term, there's pretty much no hope. Unless he gets cured when we kill Strahd. Yeah. 